continuation of, of uh, the packet we're giving on uh, sound. And we covered various aspects of sound so far. The last of the week uh, and today, we're going to cover, cover what is called MIDI music. So MIDI music is electronic sound. It's all made by these electronic gadgets and devices we have. So very powerful. Good for learning, good for playing, good for lots of things. Come out about in 1982 in Japan. So <coughs> there's a lot you really have to learn uh, to get into MIDI. And it's, most musicians, it's already very much part of their life. And sometimes they don't even know that it's MIDI, they're just using it. Like all these keyboards they sell to kids. Christmas time. Anytime you see it electric, it is probably MIDI, which means it's done on a computer. So if you're into computers, which most of you are, you know there's two ways to send a signal. This is parallel. This is serial. So it's very obvious this is slower than that. Right? If you send one, 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 or one, 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 this is going to get there a lot faster. So Go back to 1982, 1980, I bought my first computer, 4K Radio Shack. So there wasn't a lot around there in the computer world. So they're still using these old protocols. This one is called RS-232, which is a serial, serial. This is parallel. Okay. Therefore, to get a lot of music out of this thing, you've got to have a very, very fast speed. So when they're communicating, they've got to be communicating at 32,000 per second. 32,000 bytes per second. So try and get that in your head. Per second, you've got 32,000 bytes. Okay. So, if you've got an orchestra in that thing, you know, 10 violins, 10 trumpets, whatever, you're going to have to pack an awful lot of information through there in a hurry. Right? And that's why it, it has to go so fast. Most things you do with the RS-232 or serial interface, you don't go that fast. You may go 9,000, 11,000, but anyway, for the, the MIDI, it's got to go fast. So, when you're transmitting a signal, a MIDI signal here, you have three things. One, get rid of this one. Okay, one is a note. You've got to tell the computer what note you want. Okay, so you've got to tell it. I want middle C. And then you got to tell it velocity, they call it, how loud you want it. I don't want it so loud it's going to knock you off the room. And I don't want it so soft that you can't hear. So whenever you send one signal, you have to have the middle of that. And then you have to have a channel. MIDI, you have 1 to 16 channels. For those of you who have gone through our lectures in the past, what that leads up to is hexadecimal math. So for programming a lot of this stuff, they use hexadecimal, just like engineers do. Anybody remember hexadecimal? What it is? 
Yeah. It's based on 16, decimal based on 10, right? So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. When the computer works, it counts from 0 to 9. Decimal, we count from 1 to 10, right? So we're up to 9, so then they start with A, B, C, D, E, F. for what we're going to show today. Okay. So if you think about that, that is usually the right hand on the piano and the left hand. So channel two might be left hand or channel four might. We'll get to that box and show you how Roland doing it, Roland and Germany is doing it. Channel 10 is always reserved for rhythm instruments. Your drums, your guitars, anything that's going to do rhythm, you put out 10. Or it ain't going to work. So therefore, when you send this here, you've got to tell it what channel you want it on. In our case, we want it on channel one. More or less, you got all that? Okay, let's get to the keyboard. And this keyboard is Casillo, and the reason I got it, because in, in music, it's like learning a language. You've got to learn a language, you gotta hear it and speak it, right? Then you gotta what, read it and write it. So there's four aspects. When you say I'm fluent in Spanish, there are four things you've got to do. If you say I'm fluent and you can't read and write, you're still what we consider illiterate. Right? So it's the same in music. A lot of musicians don't want to bother reading reading music, but they will not get very far generally speaking, depending on what you want to do in the educational world, you've got to learn to read music. So if you learn to read a book or a comic book, you can learn to read music. So again, it's kind of a mindset that you have. So anyway, what I'm getting at in music, there's what we call muscle memory. The same as in a sport. If I'm going to throw a football, or if I'm going to throw a uh, basketball, that's muscle memory not brain power working. It is synapses between the brain and the muscle. If you're training the muscle, when you throw that football back over and over and over again, you're training the muscle. So a lot of people do not train the muscle. They, what they do is they learn to sight read. They become tech, technicians. They see it on, on the music, it goes in, and it comes out the hand. But the muscle itself, it's just responding to a signal from the brain. The muscle itself has to play. So when we teach dance, for example, two hours on Friday night, when we teach dance, that's all muscle memory. We want to do this, this, so it's all muscle moving. We know, well, now move the left hand, now move the right hand. There's no, and dancing they have tried for years to get a good notation system. No good ones came around, but they did do video. So video now is being used to teach a lot of dance. But if you think about it in dance, you would have to tell every finger, all the arms, feet, legs, what you want them to do. You want to bend at the knee, you want this like so, and so, so. You can't do that and write it out. So in music, it's kind of the same thing. It is extremely complicated. You've got to tell the music everything you want it to do, how loud you want it, and if you're going to get into modern stereo systems, you've got to tell it, I want you over here, mariachi, you want the violin over there, I want the guitar over there, here. Okay. I want that stereo sound coming in. I want the ham, we call it hamming. How loud you want it, 
So you've got to tell the computer everything that, that you normally would do. So anyway, back to this. This particular unit has that built in. So the next thing I'll show you is the computer, how we put this with a program in the computer. Uh, the girls, uh, Roy, can you change the camera? Do what? Oh, yeah. Am I still in there? Samantha did this in the computer with the program. So she puts in the music that I tell her to put in for whatever we're doing. So we put it, the SD card in here. And then I turned it on. And now this here will play whatever whatever I bring up. So let's bring up some things. So here I go to Amazing Grace. I'm going to get something else. I just keep adding. Well, here's the good one. There's Dave Dolores. Okay, this is one of the songs that we practice today and we'll be doing through Sing of the Miles. So, some Mexican songs, Spanish songs, some all through. And I think this one has got, but well, I want to show you some different styles. So, Let's push play. Now, for those that want to learn music and they don't want to learn the, the hard part, but the other keyboard we have, this one is heavy, but the newer one, the Yamaha, uh, any woman can carry it, and most uh, children, if they're probably eight or nine years old, works on batteries, you can plug it in, and what they recommend you do is just sit there and follow the keys. You can follow the keys until you know it by heart. And that one you can do various things with it, called the Yamaha Yes Look, easy learning system. You can push a button, and it won't go on until you press the next key. So if this key lights up, when you push that, it's called waiting. Push this button, it won't go on until you push the next one. So the faster you get, obviously you'll come up to speed. If it's gonna wait each time you, you push it. So and that's how you can use this whole MIDI system in learning how to play uh, at least keyboards today. And that keyboard can be an accordion, an organ, or piano, depending on how it's, uh, the guts of it are made. Anyway, so this one's very heavy. I don't even like carrying it around. Okay. But the newer one I've got is light, so you can sling it over your shoulder easy, easy and so on. So. Next thing then that Roland came out with is this here device. And this is a, uh, uh, it's our sound box puts out music and so on. Uh, but it can be also in, in the rolling pianos like this here, they take this and put it into the, the piano. So everything I'm showing you here, you can do in the piano. So anyway, you turn it on, you put a USB card in here. This is what we use every Tuesday night to practice dance. And then the same way you find the song you want uh, and so on. But if you're going to use, use it like this, there, that card, for example, I could take <coughs> and plug in USB here. <coughs> here you'll see your channels. Here's right hand, left hand, and rhythm. And then you can use other channels for your guitar and your bass. Now, what that means is this one doesn't do it, but my newer one does it. You can also, on those, push a button, and it plays the left hand, and you play the right hand. Or push the button, and it plays the right hand, and it plays the left hand. So learning the hands with one or two hands is pretty tough for uh, some kind of music. Keyboards, you have to learn how to accordion, you have to learn how to do 
trumpet, but on a guitar you have to use two hands. But some instruments you don't. So a lot of musicians never learn to use the left hand. Now we'll then go up from here. I've got a lot of our bluegrass in here. So we've made this. Okay, this is Cotton Eye Joe we just played today. So now what I had her do is because in, in music, there's certain people who play bass, there's certain people who play middle music, high, middle, low. Your guitar plays rhythm down here. Your bass player is here. Your guitar player may play bass or that. Like we just talked about if you have a bass player, guitar player should not be playing bass. A bass guitar, and then your melody up here. So if you're learning to play that on a keyboard, for example, if you're going to play it, I'm playing both. Somebody's learning that, like the young kids we've gotten.